Hello everyone. So we're going to go through another paper here. This is going to be the paper one geography AQA eight zero three five. Now, just remember for this one, you will still have an hour and 30 minutes. There are no reductions on the paper one physical exam and you will answer all the questions from A and B and then from section C you only answer two questions. Now we will get to that section and talk about an easy way to remember that when we get there. Uh, you got all your equipment here that you can use. So yeah just remember the purpose of these videos. They are not meant to be sort of where I answer it word for word. Uh, these videos are designed to be just me taking you through how I would answer questions as an expert. What you need to be doing as you watch these videos is listening to how I pull apart questions and considering what you would do as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's make a start. So, first of all, state what is meant by extreme weather. You got that one mark there. Extreme weather is effectively weather that is out of the ordinary. Okay, it falls out of the usual weather patterns. So, for example, this could be a heat wave or torrential rain or a storm or a drought. Okay. So it's whether that falls out of the usual pattern. Which one of the following statements does not describe an extreme weather event in the United Kingdom? Well, we've got a snow blizzard in the Midlands, which is extreme weather. A heat wave, extreme weather. Tornado, extreme weather. Our answer here is that one. A wet winter in Western Scotland is a fairly usual, ordinary thing. So read the questions nice and carefully. Now we would usually be able to see a map here um, uh, of a weather forecast in the United Kingdom. We have our A to D here and all you would do is circle the one that is true. So just go through them bit by bit. Usually the only thing you need to do with these questions literally is just look and slow. Just, just slow down, look carefully, don't rush, and just read the question. Okay, so we have arrived at our first uh, sort of higher tariff question, a six marker. We can see at the top, we've got some nice AO1 there, we've got some nice knowledge, got a bit of a, an extract here. And we can see here the command word is suggest how extreme weather in the United Kingdom can have economic and social impacts. So impacts to do with money and impacts to do with people. You must use the figure in your own understanding. OK, let's pull this apart a little bit then. So remember, a suggest basically is a hidden explain. You have got uh, six marks, so that is going to be ECS times two. And remember that stretch wants to try and hook back to the question to keep you targeted. So basically what we're asking is, how does extreme weather affect the British economy and people? And what I would say, that that is an ECS paragraph and that is an ECS paragraph. So read the question and it will help you to get some structure. I do advise that you use paragraphs, okay? It helps to segment your writing and an examiner loves a paragraph, especially when they've been bulking um, very late into the evening. Uh, give them paragraphs, it helps them, it helps you. Now what we can see here is some really clear AO1 the beast from the east cost the UK one billion per day. Use it, quote it, okay? 
use that as part of your evidence talk about the issues associated with that the economy is going to suffer okay you could talk about here uh so for example you could talk about schools are closed leading to social impacts children are going to miss out on school you could talk about how there were amber and red weather warnings a risk to life which is definitely a social issue so with this question, you are really lucky to just hook in your own understanding to this AO1 up here. Remember, you're using connectives and connective quotes to force you to explain such as this means that. As a result. Consequently, these phrases and words force you to explain they're very very important to us so use them so with this if it was me i don't want to spend too much time getting into the into the bits and bobs of this but if this was me i would talk about one ecs being the one billion a year and that leads to economic impact for the country and then my next one would likely be schools closing and I would talk about the damage to education pardon me maybe in particular GCSE outcomes okay March 2018 is right in that exam prep season for SATs and for GCSEs that little bit of extra one can go a long way okay so yeah hidden explain two ECSs nice straightforward let's move on oh, extra space there in case you need it right so figure three a gap fill now with this exactly the same as the previous question as the previous question at the start slow down slow down read the resource most tropical storms happen between the latitudes of five degrees to 30 degrees north and south of the what we can see quite clearly of the equator. On average, three or more tropical storms per year take place in the East Pacific and the, so we're looking for three or more, which is that red. The East Pacific is already done, so the next area is there, so it's East Asia. In the Caribbean, the main months for tropical storms are between, so we look in the Caribbean, August and October. These questions, these style of questions, there really is no excuse. Slow down, take your time and read the resource. These are three of the easiest marks you will ever come across in all your exam series. Really straightforward. Okay, two reasons why tropical storms form in these areas. Your revision here going to be important but you would say for example the area of the tropics you could say it is because there is warmer waters you could say because there are the trade winds here okay which means there's low wind shear because all the wind is traveling in a similar direction there's lots you could talk about here okay so a little bit of revision here goes a long way Okay, figure four, table listing some of the most severe tropical storms over the last 50 years. Go from 1970 in the Bahol, in the Bahol cyclone, all the way up to Hurricane Irma um, uh, in 2017. As maximum wind speeds increase, so does the number of deaths linked to tropical storms. Do you agree? Use evidence from figure four. So, slow down, look at the data. Well, as the speed increases, Let's have a look here, 305, 260 deaths, 205, 100 kilometers less, 100 kilometers per hour less, 350,000. No, <laughs> no, I, no, I do not agree, okay? Uh, you can clearly see that as speed increases, the deaths do not automatically increase. Okay, they just don't look here. Look, 298 mile an hour 
the fastest, no, the second fast, no, third fastest, pardon me, third fastest hurricane in this sort of, or the first fastest tropical storm in this table, and it produced the least amount of deaths. So once you've made your point, use data from that table. And this is the important bit, use data, okay? Actually use the names, quote the names, quote the numbers. They give you these deliberately for you to use. Okay, so use the data. Suggest one way distribution of tropical storms could change if the ocean temperatures continue to rise. Well, if we go back just a couple, these areas of the world are warmer waters. So if the heat of the ocean is increasing, one would believe and one could suggest that the area of warmer waters will expand meaning that storms could become more spread out so this is just where your revision and your geographical understanding plays a part okay four marker explain how alternative energy production so basically renewables and planting trees may help to reduce the rate of climate change. Okay, four marks, EC times two. You must talk about both to get four marks. So you've got an EC here and an EC here. Okay, and it is literally just AO1, AO2, knowledge and understanding. So take your time here. There's no need to spend too much time on this one. Renewables obviously offer less pollution, link it to climate change, and then planting trees, also known as afforestation. Well, they are carbon sinks. They absorb carbon, which again will lower the amount will lower the amount of greenhouse gases. There you go. With these four markers, never be afraid to be specific and get that sort of technical language in. I think sometimes in four markers, there is a tendency to not be technical because you think, oh, it's only four marks. Be technical. If you're talking about greenhouse gases, give some certain greenhouse gases okay be as technical as you can okay so here we have got our first nine marker all right and to look at it it looks pretty big just take a second have a look so we can see We've got water bottles being handed out in Haiti after an earthquake. And we can see homes being built as well in Haiti. And the question is, long-term responses are more important than immediate responses. Do you agree? And then basically, just explain. And you must use figure five and one or more examples. So right now, in your exam, you are thinking, oh, wow, where do I start? Well, first of all, let's think about where you're going to finish. Remember, know where you're going to go. Do this on your paper if you need to. First of all, decide, do you agree with the statement or do you disagree? Now, there is no wrong answer here. It is completely your opinion. So you need to decide straight away. So if you agree with this statement, you pop your tick underneath your line because you agree. And then you've got a structure to follow. So you could say, right, well, my first paragraph needs to agree. My second paragraph needs to offer some balance, some disagreement. But my third paragraph needs to agree. And likewise, if you disagree... 
you could follow that structure. This helps. This helps. Students often get lost in the structure. Do this. Now, you've got to use figure five, but your whole answer does not need to be driven by figure five. You just need to use it in some way, shape or form. So you may say, for example, I do agree that long term responses are more important. As you can see in the picture, they are building new homes in Haiti, which will be better able to withstand tectonic hazards in the future. And then you use some of your own AO1 to back yourself up. So at that point, you could maybe talk about L'Aquila and say, oh, you know, they improved the building code in L'Aquila so that buildings were better prepared in the future. You could use Nepal. Similar sort of thing. So you're just sprinkling in your own AO1 to back up your arguments. Okay. Now, remember, this is a nine marker, so it will be ECS times three with a nice conclusion at the end just to sort of tick that box. And your stretch, remember, should link back to that question. It should hook back to the question to keep you focused. When you start to pull it apart, this question is actually pretty straightforward. And once you've used the figure, in some way, you bang on. Say if you only really mention this. Yeah, it's probably best if you mention this one as well, but you just gotta use it in some way, shape or form. This is where these answers are quite hard to teach because there's no right or wrong way in terms of the balance. You might use it quite a lot, you might not use it all that much, but you've just gotta use it in some way. What's key really for us as well though is this here you've got to use a bit of your own as well so for example i could say well i disagree or some people may disagree because in l'aquila the red cross were helping within the hour to rescue people which meant that the death count was lowered and kept at 308 because people were rescued very quickly and medical attention was given to them. So you're using those specific examples where you can. Now remember, on these big, big questions, if you are absolutely flummoxed, if you do not know and you're running low on time, move on or just bullet point. Give me some of that sort of key AO1. Just get what you can in. OK, get what you can in. In your exam, you should never, ever leave sentences or answers unfinished. Just do what you can. OK, we do. I do not advise that you bullet point. You should try and write a full answer if you can. But if you are if you are stuck for time and you need to just get something down, put bullet points. OK. Spag marks. So just be careful of your spelling and your grammar, in particular capital letters. And as well, plenty of technical language. Okay. There we go. Hopefully that helps. Main thing with a question like this is just slow down. Just slow down. Read it. Take it in. All right, let's move on. Okay, living world. Again, one easy mark. Read through and just check it. And as you can see, moles, e beetles. So the answer there is that. The direction of the arrow shows the direction the energy moves in. So the energy moves up to the badger. Okay, let's just bear that in mind. Suggest what would happen in the food web if foxes became extinct. We'll find foxes. Well, if there was no foxes, there would be an increase in moles because there's no foxes eating them which could lead to a decrease in beetles because there are more moles eating beetles, okay? So just bear that in mind. With these questions, okay, be sure to use the figure. Actually use it. I can see in the figure. Just bear that in mind. 
One role of decomposers, well, they return nutrients to the cycle. Okay, they return nutrients to that natural cycle. They recycle nutrients, you could say. There we go. Okay, we can see here a graph showing different biomass levels. Okay, a trophic pyramid. Uh, I haven't got a calculator hand, but basically you just need to calculate the percentage loss in biomass between the primary consumer, which is here, and the secondary consumer. So you just need to work out the percentage difference between these two. You'll have a calculator, you can use it. And basically, at the bottom, you just need to give two reasons why the biomass changes between each level. This is where your revision comes into play, but effectively what you're looking at is um, uh, the size of the organism increases. So basically it takes more of the layer below to sustain it. Okay, so to sustain 300 small birds, you need 12,000 caterpillars. Okay, so the, the level as you go up requires more. So just your revision there goes a long way. Using figure eight, which part of the rainforest matches the following description? Now the key bit here, they are giving you a big, big hand. They're literally giving you, <laughs> they are giving you the answer. 15 to 30, we're in that zone there. And you can see here, 15 to 30 is gonna be that upper canopy there. So just bear that in mind. Using figure eight, what is one characteristic of the base of lower trees? Again, uh, taller trees, sorry, this is a Eurovision, they have buttress roots. Okay. Which are large, wide roots. One effect on deforestation, on the soils of the rainforest. Again, Eurovision comes into play here. We've got soil erosion. So just, again, reading around. Now for us, we're looking at these two pictures and we are focusing on deserts. We as a trust focus on deserts. We've got a six marker here. Have a little look at it. So plants and animals adapt to survive in hostile environments. Just explain it. Simple as that. You tick that because that's what we do. You've got ECS times two. You must use the figure, which for us is nine, and you can clearly see you've got a cactus and a camel. So what you want to do is have an ECS on the cactus and an ECS on the camel. Nothing more to it, really. That's it. Now, with this sort of question, you need to think about how much you write in. Yes, you could just write about the hump. Yes, you could just write about the spines. But that's not going to take you long. So maybe pepper in a few adaptations. So, for example, they have a sort of a padded feet. Camel adaptation song, one of the classics. Adam, adaptation. Uh, wide roots, boom, there we go. Okay, so mention a few. But then remember that stretch, link it into that key statement there, hostile environment. So what this is going to be wanting to know, as well as adaptations, it's going to be wanting to know a little bit about that desert. 50 degree days less than 250 millimetres of rain a year. It's going to want to know that little bit of extra AO1 about deserts, okay, to really fit that in, all right? So, yeah, I'm not going to go into the content of these two, okay? That's where your revision comes in. But nice, clear, ECS times two. This is one of the most straightforward high-tariff questions you'll come across this. Just how do plants and animals adapt to survive? Really straightforward. Okay, then you've got the nine marker for this section. For us, it's the hot environment. So to what extent is 
human activity the cause of desertification in the fringes of the hot desert. Okay, now to what extent is de is demanding your opinion? Ao three, and to what extent it wants to know an amount. So, do you strongly agree? Or partially agree? It wants to know... Just like It wants you to give an actual amount. Now, for this, it's pretty... It's, it's kind of pushing you in that direction. Human activity is the main cause of desertification. Okay. So what it wants you to do is effectively is, is, it, is effectively just talk about that. So remember to conclude, you could do your uh, tick cross model. So for me, for example, I would agree that humans do cause desertification, okay, because it's asking you there. So I would say, right, well, my first point is going to be over farming. However, there are natural causes, for example, natural climate change. However, if we think about population growth, that is a human activity leading into that conclusion. Now, something to help you out in terms of knowing where you're going to go with this, say immediately what you think. I partially completely whatever okay say immediately what you think remember those connective statements something else to bear in mind you don't necessarily need uh, you don't necessarily need balance you don't necessarily need balance okay so for example this might be a really chunky paragraph where you really go to town. This one might be a little bit smaller, but just by giving that other side, it shows that you're thinking about the other argument, the other element of this. And then this one might be like a bit of a halfway house. So you don't need to necessarily write three big chunky questions. You don't need to do uh, uh, paragraphs. You don't need to do that. Just consider that moving forward. And yes, just remember paragraphs. Okay. Just remember your paragraphs here. And remember just your ECS model with that stretch hooked back into the question. So just bear that in mind. And again, importantly, revision. This is all about revision. Got to be revising. Right, now, section C, you answer two questions. Now, the easy way to know what you've got to do here is you just don't answer the Glacier question. Simple as that. You do not answer the Glacier question. So you do coasts and you do rivers. Okay, here we go. Using figure 11, compare the features of a destructive and a constructive wave. So again, bit of revision, you've got a high crest here and you've got a high crest because the wave raises up, rises up quite high. You could say that it, it crashes onto the beach, whereas the constructive one rolls. Okay, there's quite a few things you could mention here. So again, a bit of your revision goes along like here. Okay, we've got a spit which is a landform of deposition caused by longshore drift. Just got to calculate the mean. So add all of these up and then you divide it um, uh, by the total amount of values, which is a six. So you'll get your answer there. You've got a calculator, use it. Uh, suggest one reason for the difference in the sediment size between X and Y. Well, Y will be smaller. I'm not going to work it out right now. But this, again, is just where that little bit of uh, revision comes in. It's going to be smaller because to get further out, it requires less 
energy. So again, that little bit of extra revision. Which of these is a process of mass movement in coastal environments? Well, let's go through it super quick. Frost shattering, zoom in, frost shattering is weathering. So it's not that one. Slumping is mass movement, so that's the answer. Uh, it happens on a curved slip plane where the land will just... That's terrible. Uh, it will happen on a curved slip plane where the land will basically just slump away. Attrition is erosion where the rocks will hit each other and become smaller, rounder and smoother. And longshore drift is transportation. Okay. Swash and backwash, that zigzag motion along the beach. There we go. Right then, here we have got a photograph of sea defences in Hornsey. We have got a lot happening here. So, let's have a little look. Explain how the sea defences shown in figure 13 helped protect the coastline from erosion. Full marks, so it's EC times two. Okay, and there is a very, very useful little trick here that you've got to look out for. It's plural. So if you do not talk about more than one, you will not get full marks for this. So you've got to talk about more than one. Well, what can we see here? Well, we can see rock armour. We can see groins, and we can see over here a seawall. So basically, pick two, explain how they work. Simple as that, nothing more to it. Now, something a lot of students will do here is they will give an evaluation. So they will go, oh, you know, uh, a positive about seawall is long lasting. No, this is an explain. All it wants is AO1 and AO2. Literally just how does it work? That's all it wants to know. There we go. Same, similar idea here. You have got this area of coast which has been eroded away. We know that this is hard rock because what we can see here is your classic store, sort of stump system. Stump systems form on headlands. So this is hard rock. Okay, and all of that, all of that is literally, all of that's your revision. All of that is just your revision. So, same thing. Explain. So you've got that AO1 and 2. Coastal land forms, but if you look nice and closely, land forms are created by erosion. Okay, six marks. Now, ECS doesn't always fit itself nicely into these. Sometimes the process model works for this. So firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, and so on. There's multiple things you can talk about here. You can talk about the formation of a stump. You could talk about the formation of a headland, because this is a headland. You could, because it will be under there, you could talk about the formation of a wave cut platform. So there are multiple things you can mention here. Now remember, this does remember you do not need balance. So you could give a really big chunky paragraph on say the stump. But then you could just give a little mini one about how this is all occurring on a headland, which is basically eroded hard rock. Alternating with soft. Okay, so again, read the question, think about what's best, bear in mind that mark there. Okay. 
Okay, rivers. Describe all the cross profile changes. We well, can see here the valley very steep V shaped. Here and here you can see very U shaped. Something you can mention. Nice and straightforward. Use what they give you. Okay, so here. You just work out the median. We can see a meander diagram here. So remember, a median, you are finding that middle value. Uh, what you will have noticed, this is an even. So you will have two medians in the middle. So what you do is you add them together and then you divide by two. And then that is your median. Bear that in mind. So just one reason why there is a difference in river velocity between x and y. Now again, this is where your revision comes into play. This here is the outside of a meander. This is the inside. On the outside, it is deeper. There is more water. So the velocity, the speed of the water is higher. So again, this is just where your revision is key. Well, abrasion is erosion. Deposition is deposition when it gets dropped. Hydraulic power is erosion. So the answer is traction. Traction is rolling rock. Saltation is bouncing rock. Okay, so a little bit extra there, but there you go. Okay, right, four marker. Diagram showing floodplain zoning. So this is a method of soft engineering. And all floodplain zoning basically is, you put your high value infrastructure far away, so it doesn't flood. And then your low value closer. Put that. They've put this in for a reason. They want you to use it. So explain how soft engineering strategies can reduce the impact of river flooding. Four marks. So, you know, it's not really a process question. So you can do EC times two on this one. Again, I'm not going to go into the content of this massively, but... If we say the high value is further away, so what that basically means is that the impact is lessened. We could also say as well as uh, that there is a permeable land closer to the river. which basically means more infiltration of water, which lowers the flood risk. So again, it's just your revision here that's really important. Remember those key connectors as well. This means that, okay, as a result, that sort of thing. Okay, explain how the landforms shown in figure 18 are created by Physical processes, again, explain lots of AO1 and 2, as you would expect in a paper 1. Okay, lots of just how does this happen. Landforms, wants to know about more than one. Created in figure 18, created by physical processes. So you're looking at that process model. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, so on. Well, we can clearly see it's a waterfall. So you've got to talk about the formation of a waterfall. So you're going to be talking about erosion. You're going to be talking about that undercutting as well. But then there's a little bit more. It wants to know about landforms. Well, often behind a waterfall as it retreats, you will get a gorge forming as well. So you could talk about that a little bit. As long as you're mentioning that, that counts. Here you can see rapids caused by 
bands of hard and soft rock. So there's a few things you can kind of mention here. In these sort of questions, in particular about waterfalls, it's important to kind of use your knowledge tactically. With a waterfall, what's important is that as the water hits the underneath of the waterfall, you will get that erosion of the soft rock there. Okay? But think about the kind of erosion that will be happening there. That's not going to be attrition. Because attrition is where rocks hit each other. This is actually going to be abrasion and hydraulic force or action. So think about the think about the tactics of your AO1. Don't just throw in any type of erosion because that's because you think, oh, I'll put attrition in. Think carefully about what types you're putting in. It all matters. Glazier's question, you do not do. So you reach the end. Then what you do is you go through and you check these. You check these low markers. One mark there. One mark there. So that's two easy marks there. Let's see. I'm looking for those multiple choice questions. So two, three, I guess four there. Five there. Six. Seven. You know, it. I mean, arguably this, eight, nine, it, those, check those straightforward questions first and then look to focus on the big mark questions okay because looking at the small mark questions first kind of resets your mind ready to look at the big ones so that was paper one 2019 hopefully that was useful for you and yeah if you do need me, come and find me. Uh, but remember, keep watching these videos. Keep listening to how I pull them apart because these questions can come in all different shapes and sizes. It's been a pleasure, guys. And take care. Thank you so much.